Hi everyone, we're going to do one final example on error propagation, which is so-called mixed operations. And this is our example, and we call it mixed operations because as you can see, we're subtracting in the numerator, and once we do that, we'll have to divide. So we'll just have to follow the rules for error propagation as we go. So in the numerator, when I take 4.97 and subtract 1.86, I get 3.11 plus or minus some error, which I'm going to call E1, and then I'm going to have to divide that by 21.1 plus or minus 0 0.2. So why don't we solve for E1 first? Again, the arithmetic in the numerator is subtraction, so I'm going to work with these absolute errors as they are. So the absolute error of that difference will be the absolute error of our first measurement, 0 0.02 squared, plus the absolute error of our second measurement, 0 0.01 squared. And then I get for E1, 0 0.05 with an insignificant 1. So now the problem becomes 3.11 plus or minus 0 0.05 with an insignificant 1 divided by 21.1 plus or minus 0 0.2. And when I do this arithmetic here, I get 0 0.147 with an insignificant 4 if I don't have to follow the real rule plus or minus some error, which I'll call E2. So now we'll solve for E2, but looking at our arithmetic, which involves division, we're going to have to use percent relative error. So let's do that. The percent relative error of that quotient is going to be the square root of the percent relative error of our first measurement squared. So that'll be 0 0.05 over 3.11 times 100, the quantity squared. And then the same thing for the second measurement, 0 0.2 over 21.1 times 100, the quantity squared. And when I did this arithmetic, I got 1.9%. So we could say that our result is 0 0.147 plus or minus 2%. And let's see if we can get the absolute from that. The absolute error, what would that be? That would be 1.9% of that final result, 0 0.147 with an insignificant 4 gives 0 0.002 with an insignificant 8. So we could also say 0 0.147 plus or minus 0 0.003. So we've computed our result with both the percent relative and the absolute errors. And we didn't have to use the real rule, did we, right? We have three decimal places in our uncertainty, three decimal places in our result. Or stated otherwise, the first non-zero digit of the absolute error is the last significant figure. So that was an example of a problem involving mixed operations. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for listening.